Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued a royal decree pardoning and releasing 32 inmates who had been convicted in various court cases and served part of their jail terms. The kind royal gesture marking Eid al Adha reflects His Majesty the King's keenness to provide the pardoned inmates with the opportunity to reintegrate society into society and participate in the kingdom's development march. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree 81 of the year 2021, appointing Engineer Ali Na'mat Ali Abdurrahim as Deputy Chief Executive Officer for Distribution and Customer Services, and Ali Ashur Ali Abdul Latif as Deputy Chief Executive Officer for Resources and Services, both at the Electricity and Water Authority (EWA). His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq Al Said of Oman. During the telephone call, they exchanged congratulations on the advent of Eid Al Adha, wishing the Arab and Islamic nations many happy returns. His Majesty also held telephone calls with the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, Deputy Supreme Commander of the United Arab Emirates, Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, where they exchanged congratulations on the occasion, wishing the two countries countries and people as well as the Arab and Islamic nations many happy returns. During the telephone call, the fraternal and historic relations between the two countries were reviewed. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 39 of the year 2021, appointing the following directors at the Electricity and Water Affairs Authority, EWA. Rasha Saleh Abdullah Kamshaki, Director of the Water Distribution Directorate. Fadi Jamal Jamil Abed, Director of the Projects Directorate. Mohammed Abdelaziz Ali Al Atawi, Director of the Electricity Transmission Directorate. Ibrahim Khalil Ibrahim Ahmed, Director of the Electricity Distribution Directorate, Yusuf Samih Abdullah Al Khan, Director of the Financial Resources and Services Directorate, Kouthar Al Sayyid Abbas Ali Al Musawi, Director of the Customer Accounts Directorate, Ibrahim Hamid Al Sheikh Ibrahim Al Mubarak, Director of the Electricity and Water Conservation Directorate, Taha Hassan Ibrahim Al Muhsin, Director of the Water Transmission Directorate. The Minister of Health, Faiqa Saleh, received the credentials of the World Health Organization WHO representative to Bahrain, Dr. Tasneem Atatra. Al Saleh affirmed that the Ministry of Health will provide all the support WHO needs through all its health efforts, services and procedures to achieve the desired goals. The Minister hailed the efforts of the WHO in overcoming the repercussions of the coronavirus and its vital role in supporting world efforts to develop health and treatment services in combating pandemics and diseases. The Information Affairs Minister and Board of Trustees Chairman of the Bahrain Institute for Political Development, the BIPD, Ali bin Mohammed Ramehi, chaired the regular meeting of the BIPD Board of Trustees remotely with the participation of members and executive director. Ramehi extended on behalf of the members of the BIPD's Board of Trustees and Executive Management congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on Eid Al Adha, wishing them and the Bahraini people many happy returns. The panel reviewed the programs and events implemented by the BIPD over the last period, which contributed to, rise or to raising political awareness among the citizens in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution and the National Action Charter. It also provided support for parliamentary and municipal work in the Kingdom in line with His Majesty the King's comprehensive development process and uh, commensurating with the goals set in the Royal Decree establishing the BIPD. The Board was told that during the first half of this year, BIPD implemented as many as 51 events, including programs, seminars, workshops and lectures, benefiting 5,350 participants, including 3,305 from awareness programs and 2,045 from training programs. The BIPD also published a number of specialized legal, political and documentation studies during the same period as part of its efforts to spread political awareness and culture among the targeted groups in addition to its key 
keenness to encourage academics and researchers to contribute to educational events and activities that benefit the members of society. Then the panel reviewed BIPD's future action plan and the programs and events to be implemented later this year. Ramehi stressed the pivotal role played by the BIPD to raise political awareness, highlighting the comprehensive development march and foster the values of loyalty, belonging to the nation and citizenship among all social segments, confirming its great impact on the Bahraini society, citing BIPD's effective contributions to preparing political and parliamentary competencies, as well as national youth caters, in addition to its keenness to enhance cooperation with various national institutions, particularly the uh, bicameral National Assembly, Assembly municipal councils, among others. Ramehi pledged that the BIPD will continue implementing its national mission in line with the directives of His Majesty the King in a way that serves all Bahrainis. The Shura Council took part in a discussion of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia, the UNESCWA, meeting to discuss uh, launching the COVID-19 stimulus tracker, which comes under the theme of COVID-19 social protection and economic policy responses, governments, lessons uh, for social protection readiness and building forward better. And to speak more about this, we are joined over the phone by the Shura Council member and the Deputy Chairman of the Economic and Financial Affairs Committee, Mr. Rida Faraj. Hello, Mr. Rida. Hello, good evening. Thank you for being with us. Can you please tell Thank us... Thank you for having me. Can you, can you please tell us about your participation in the UNES Kiwa or the UNESCWA discussion and how it reflected the Kingdom of Bahrain's outstanding experience? Well, uh, sort of, the whole sort of really, it was over two days and with a lot of sort of participants all talking about their experiences and I sort of really uh, explained the experience of Bahrain as being a unique and deserves really a lot of studies and uh, driving lessons for future. Our sort of stand was from the day His Royal Highness gave the directive that the government of Bahrain shall spare no money, no way anything that needs to be done would be done to make sure that this pandemic get sort of really is well considered, well prepared for, and well people are well treated. And from the day zero, it was everybody in Bahrain with no exception. So therefore, there was no exception to the fact that sort of locals or the expatriates, no, everybody inclusive whoever is resident in Bahrain. And our experience, I try to explain it briefly because uh, there was no much time. Uh, I try to say that it was basically uh, over three sort of main areas. One was related to the management. Second thing was related to the information. The third was related to the economic support. Yeah. With the management from the day zero, even before we ever had any cases in Bahrain, the government of Bahrain under the directorship of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Prime Minister, set up a team dedicated. And this team's task was to make sure that everything is prepared, it's in place well before the pandemic ever hits the, government, the, the area or the, the, the kingdom. Uh, the hospitals, uh, the, medic, the, the medical sort of requirements, the equipment, everything was well prepared in advance, far more in quantities even than what right. we required or what we expected to require. The second area, which was very, very important, and a lot of people struggled in it, but we were very lucky because from the day zero, we had it all controlled. It was the information. Mm -hmm accurate, well-defined information, and timely. So people were receiving the same information all at the same time with same contents, and there was nothing which is being sort of really uh, uncovered or untold or not reported. So the number of cases, the number of people tested, number of people who have sort of been hospitalized, number of people released, even got, well, this is the case, the people who died, exact numbers without any sort of uh, hiding or any uh, facts being sort of really uh, 
being fully transparent, I mean. Right. The third sort of area was very important was was the support, the, the, the sort of really the economic support to those needy people. About 30% of the government GDP was allocated to pay support to those who were affected by this pandemic. And this was in form of many sort of really different programs, some being sort of really in terms of exempting people from paying certain things like electricity, water bill for some time, uh, delaying sort of payments of certain rents, uh, delaying sort of payment or dropping right. payment of interest in some cases. So there were in so many and some other, many other cases where cash and salaries to people. So as a whole, Bahrain sort of really was well prepared, not only well prepared, it had the package or the program uh, was for everybody without exception. So therefore, everybody who resident in Bahrain was treated exactly the same, local and non-locals. And uh, the fact that sort of really we are uh, definitely uh, much better in a much better position in a lot of other countries in terms of vaccination, in terms of medication, in terms of the availability of the products which were used like masks and other things. Mm -hmm. I think we uh, were extremely lucky and uh, the experience deserved really to be well documented mm -hmm. in case, God forbid, a future incident similar to this ever uh, happens to the world even. Yes, yes, absolutely. Bahrain's exemplary reaction to this uh, humanitarian crisis is worthy of international recognition. And that was the Shura Council member and the Deputy Chairman of the Economic and Financial Affairs Committee, Mr. Rida Faraj, thank you for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,095,036 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,030,588 had taken the second, and 109,552 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 895 with 135 recoveries and 69 registered new cases and one death. 30 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 26 are contacts of active cases and 13 are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.